Hello and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. Today is 8th December. It's a Saturday today. We are going to start with a very energetic quote by Napoleon Bonaparte. Victory belongs to the most persevering, right? Uh, you will face uh, challenges, you will face hurdles, but you should not and you cannot give up, right? Never quit. And at the end of the day, you'll become victorious. With this... Uh, I have a good news for you. Flat 50% off is available on our pen drive and tablet or Android courses. Uh, this is going to last till 12th December. Check out studyaq.com to find out more about it. With this, uh, today is Saturday, so we have uh, not that many, but four articles uh, to go through and uh, all four of them are important. This one is about this uh, um, uh, Michelle's case. We are going to go through it. Uh, uneasy truce is about uh, USA and China. Uh, then we have one article on electoral bonds and then this one is about uh, tribal people of our country. So the first one, uh, the Michelle test case. Now the person that you can see on your screen, his name is uh, Christian Michelle. He is a Brit or British uh, citizen and uh, he is extradited to our country India from UAE. Of course, UK government is not happy about this thing. Extradition is basically, if I can put it in... Um, you can say simple words uh, then it is handing over of a person or a so-called fugitive if here let's take his case right uh, it's very important to understand this terminology so india was looking for this man and uh, he was uh, with the uae so officially uae has handed over this person to india so that's what extradition is all about it's all about, it's also about securing you know, it's also about bringing a person who is wanted in our country for, for various different reasons, right? Of course, for uh, something to do with clash with the law. Now, uh, Christian Michel, he's, he it is alleged that he was or he is involved as a middleman in this Augusta Westland helicopters case. Uh, this case is a very, you can say, a famous uh, controversial case, corruption case. And I'm going to give you a brief about this uh, Westland. Of course, we are not going to go through this technicality of helicopters, but to put it in most simple terminology of words, uh, it was about a helicopter that government of India was going to or was looking to purchase. And uh, it was uh, specifically for VVIPs, right, for prime ministers and uh, other important cabinet and other important people. So we were seeking some helicopters uh, that can be used as their vehicles from, from going one place to another place. Now, the thing is... Uh, you know, when we say best helicopters or best or something that I bought or something that you bought or something that government bought is best. When we say best means it's not that the most expensive thing or the most technologically advanced thing. What's your demand, right? Uh, if you have demand of orange and if oranges are supplied to you, then that we can say that that's a best deal. So I hope this is making a sense here. So. Augusta Westland helicopters, right, uh, they were not the best. Uh, when I say best, it means... They were not the only helicopters that were required, right? Uh, there were other options available as well. But uh, in various different investigations, uh, we have, uh, you know, came to know that uh, there were a few people who created uh, situations or contracts in such a way this demand was uh, modified so that it can benefit uh, just this company called Augusta Westland. And... Uh, so this is the case now it is a sub judice case so we have to wait and watch for uh, this final verdict of uh, the court now because uh, this person here uh, christian michelle is here in our country india at present cbi is interrogating him now when we say extradition of fugitives i'm sure there are many names of there are many images that will you know that pops up in our head that what about Vijay Malia? What about Nero Modi? There are other cases. There are other people as well. There are a uh, few people. There was one person. Uh, he was from Norway or Sweden or some some uh, this uh, Scandinavian country, and he was involved here uh, in a blast. Right? He played a very crucial role in this uh, blast that took place in our country. And that person, we were, we have been, we have failed. You know, in in bringing that person back to our country. There are various reasons behind it, and this is the most interesting part about this editorial, that only a third of all requests since 2002 by our country is accepted by other countries. There are 192 United Nations uh, 
uh, you know, members and out of them we have just uh, this extradition deal with 44 countries only. Uh, so far, UAE has been the most uh, successful when it comes to, you know, our relationship or our deal with UAE has been the most uh, successful. And if you go through the figures, we are seeking some 66 fugitives from UAE, but we have got 19 in last 15 years, right? So I can say that this is the best deal it's uh, moving in a very slow pace the rate is very slow and the one of the main reason why the rate is so slow is because of our uh, you can say very lethargic or very slow uh, criminal justice system uh, so this is one of the most you can say the prime reason why things are delayed now here i'm not sure how many of you can remember this face uh, this person here his name is abu salem he was a uh, you know, in fact, he is behind the bars at present, but uh, he uh, was, uh, once upon a time, he was a big uh, threat for, for people, famous uh, celebrities uh, of Indian film industry. He was, uh, you know, involved in this extra, you know, extorting people and uh, he has killed some people as well. He was involved in 1993 uh, Mumbai bomb blast case. Uh, he was caught uh, by Portuguese police and uh, I think it was Interpol who caught him and it was back in 2005 right uh, see here in 1993's bomb blast case he was he was required uh, right he was declared as a fugitive in 2005 uh, we managed uh, to bring him back from Portuguese to you know here in our from Portugal to here in our country India and uh, uh, his you know, trial uh, was finally completed back in 2017. So, as you can see here, uh, this criminal justice, this is just a small example here. The other thing is, uh, there are some, you know, anti-torture laws uh, in United Nations. And out of 192 members, if my information is not wrong, then there are some 8 or 9 countries only who have not signed uh, this United Nations, this not torturing and, you know, when, when you catch someone, then you will not torture that person. Uh, so all these things, uh, you know, there are so many things like you cannot do waterboarding, electric shocks and, you know, beating them badly. And there are so many things. There are various different psychological as well as physical way of interrogating people. Uh, but most inhumane are waterboarding and, you know, beating them very badly and all these things. So United Nations... Uh, it has got these rules and regulations or convention on this thing. And out of this, out of 192 countries, there are some eight and eight or nine countries. They have not signed uh, this thing. Uh, and India is one of uh, one of this eight or nine countries. So this is one of the main problem why there are so many countries out there, right? Uh, they are not ready to extradite uh, people to India or fugitives to India. And uh, this becomes a very strong case for people like uh, Vijay Malia, Nero Modi, and there are other, as I told you, that uh, person from Sweden uh, or this Norwegian country. Uh, he was, uh, or not Norwegian, but uh, sorry, a Scandinavian country, a person who was involved in this bomb blast case. Uh, he was, uh, he, he got himself, he saved his back uh, by, by appealing in the court and by proving this thing in, in, in the court of his country that if you send me back to India, then authorities in India will torture me, they will, you know, do everything that is inhumane with me and that is something that is against the United Nations rules and convention and uh, our country has signed this thing so you should not and court, uh, you know, finally decided that uh, that person should not be handed over to Indian authorities. So s you see here, so we are, there are so many people out there, uh, right, uh, they are out of our reach because of because of our this sort of behavior as well as our this sort of track record. CBI has to follow internationally accepted norms of interrogation when it is dealing with this uh, Michelle because this will create a sort of, uh, you can say, a safety net for people or other fugitives. So that's everything. And of course, as you can understand that uh, he is a, a British uh, citizen. So UK is not happy with uh, UAE as well as uh, India. But of course, this is something that you don't find Outside, it is uh, working more behind uh, the veil, or uh, you know, it's it's in the back room. Uh, the discussions are going on regarding this thing, and UK has also uh, requested, and it's a bit 
you know, a bit angry that uh, Michelle should be provided counselor access and things like that. Now, the second topic that we have is uneasy truce. Uh, it is very important for uh, for global trade. Uh, we know this uh, globalization is important and whatever we are at present, it is because of globalization, right? Maybe we have a fashion, computers and so many things, ideas. So globalization has played a very important role, but we know that uh, this global trade war is going on between Mr. Uh, Xi's regime, or I would say China and uh, USA, and this is uh, creating problems for each and every one of us. Now, uh, G20 meeting took place recently in Argentina, and at that point of time, we got this good, good news from Argentina that Mr. Tr uh, Trump and Mr. Xi has decided that uh, they are going to have this 90 days truce, so that... Uh, diplomats or you can say officials from both the sides they can interact with each other and they can sort out this this uh, uh, this trade war that is going on between uh, these two giants uh, now if you have this uh, i'm sure you have heard about this com company called uh, ua and ua is a big uh, brand in china they have uh, you know they make uh, uh, tablets and computers and uh, i think they make mobile phones and uh, i'm sure they are uh, also involved in this uh, data services and other uh, other technological information communication technological things right so that's their core business now the lady that you can see on your screen her name is uh, meng wonzu uh, miss meng, meng wonzu was uh, arrested in canada and uh, it was uh, based on this arrest was based on this USA's request extradition again we have this word here so extradition request from USA so now this is the thing why I explained you this term so that you have this clear idea what's going on so uh, what this term is all about and things like that so the lady here uh, uh, she is uh, CFO that is uh, chief financial officer of this uh, company right and uh, uh, she was arrested by Canadian authorities acting on an extradition request from USA. Now, this is going to create, of course, uh, you can say, you know, a very negative. It will create or generate negative ripple effect because this 90 days truce, uh, right, may, may fall down um, so because of this news. Uh, and uh, this uh, lady here, CFO, uh, she is a daughter of the company's founder. Ren Zhengfei, a former member of Chinese military. Now, there are three important, uh, you can say, reasons or uh, I would say allegations against uh, this company, uh, UA. The first one, by USA, of course, the first one is that uh, it has breached American sanctions against Iran. Uh, USA has said that uh, uh, even though sanctions were applied, there are various different sanctions on Iran, right? I'm not just talking about Katsa, but uh, before that as well, USA has applied various different, and United Nations as well as USA's uh, few sanctions are there on uh, uh, this country called Iran. So, USA has alleged that it has breached uh, these uh, sanctions. Uh, the second thing is that uh, it has also alleged that the Chinese government is using uh, this uh, UA company for for spying it has uh, as per USA it has, a, it has you know uh, it has bugged many of uh, devices uh, mobile phones and other devices uh, that are sourced from China or they are manufactured in China or this UAN uh, products are bugged and this is used by this Chinese government to keep an eye on other countries and the third one is violating intellectual property rights and here as well USA is saying that uh, it is this company is supported by China so Chinese government of China. So you can see here uh, mention of a government, mention of a Chinese government. And so it's a clear threat on this uh, truce, right? That's what uh, we can find. It will send a, it has in fact sent a very negative signal in the market. Now uh, we have to understand one thing. The, the main question here is that is it, is it a legit or, you know, is it uh, a proper legitimate concerns uh, that USA is expressing or it's just a, another form of trade war. Uh, I read a report a couple of months ago, I uh, forgot the name of the report, but um, I'm sure I read this report that Australia has cancelled its uh, this 5G network contract that was given to uh, this country, UV, uh, uh, because uh, it was uh, it was believed by the government that uh, they will, uh, this will create a uh, cyber security threat as well as national security threat for Australia, Australia and uh, UK uh, 
uh, has also uh, been you know quite uh, skeptical about this uh, UVA and they are saying that uh, it is used for intelligence gathering and other things. Now UVA has uh, clearly uh, been seen by many as a serious threat to global domination exerted by American technological companies. So it is also said that uh, the way this company is going up uh, it is a big threat for companies uh, of the western world and this is one of the main reasons why USA is trying to protect its own companies. So uh, we don't know yet, right? There are various reports and articles, and I'm sure we are going to find some more things on this thing. And if I find something technical, something interesting uh, from this IT world, like what exactly is going on, then I will try to uh, bring it for you guys. So with this, uh, an invitation to corruption, it is about electoral bond scheme. Remember, this uh, year's budget uh, finance minister talked about, talked about this uh, electoral bonds and uh, the main purpose of electoral bonds bond is or was to clean uh, the prevailing culture of uh, political sponsorship uh, which is generating huge amount of black money it is also said that it's not real estate and other uh, in uh, other industries right if you want to clean black money from our country then you have to you have to repair this uh, loopholes that we find in of our political parties and uh, their donation now uh, our previous or former chief election commissioner op rawat has said that there are many gray areas in this because when there is no ceiling on party expenditure and uh, election commission cannot monitor it uh, how can you be sure that uh, what is coming in is not black money or there is a secrecy of donor the second thing he talked about this uh, uh, electoral bond scheme is that uh, even foreign money can come come and even a dying company can give money now so uh, prima facie it uh, appears uh, the scheme cannot really deliver whatever it was intended to do. Another thing is uh, individuals, uh, body corporates, even artificial, judicial or jury, uh, not judicial, sorry, uh, juridical person can purchase electoral bonds. You have to, you know, it's only State Bank of, I'm going, giving you some technical details about it. So State Bank of India, you have to pop down to a dedicated branch of uh, State Bank of India to purchase this uh, electoral bonds. You cannot purchase it anytime there are a few dates declared uh, only at that point of time you can uh, purchase go there and purchase this bonds you can buy it in this denomination of 1000 so you can buy two uh, for you know 1000 each so if you want to donate 2000 so same goes for 10,000 1 lakh uh, 10 lakh 1 crore etc and you can mix and match as well so you can buy 1 crore 10 lakh 1000 rupees bond as well so this is how you can purchase these bonds uh, so now the thing is uh, they are there for a specified period of uh, the year you can get it only from state bank of india and uh, to purchase these bonds uh, you have to you know use your clean money you have to use your uh, proper bank source you cannot just uh, take cash and buy it you have to use proper sources so it was believed or it is believed that uh, this is how you give your you know it's, it's this will make sure that uh, clean money is is injected or clean money is uh, uh, is, is used for political funding now the thing is uh, when you are buying this bond if you are paying say for example let's take example that you have transferred this money or you have used a check all right so you don't have to uh, your name will not appear on this electoral bonds all right but if you are giving a check then naturally this transaction took place so based on this transaction government can know or this bank will know that you have used this much money for you have transferred this much money to this bank or for this purpose right so one thing will be known that uh, you have uh, purchased uh, an electoral bond now political parties you know they have to deposit this uh, bond um, in a, a specified period of time once you buy this bond then you have handed you have to give it to your political party and they will you know deposit this uh, they will deposit this uh, money in their bank account and so th this is how it works uh, it is also said that uh, IT department uh, you know uh, that is IT in the sense this uh, income tax department can come to know about this thing from you easily uh, so this is again a gray area that has been uh, you can say talk of the town many times when we talk about this electoral bond the other thing is neither the purchaser of the bond nor political party receiving the donation is mandated to disclose the donor's identity what about shareholders right if you are a shareholder in a company then it is your 
a right to know you know it's it's uh, it's a very basic thing that you should know what your company is doing where it is spending or where it is contributing money so this is a big uh, issue the other thing is earlier laws uh, prohibited uh, companies from donating anything more than 7.5 percent of their average net profit uh, over the period or for three years so if your three years average profit is 100 rupees then you can uh, deliver or you can donate only 7.5 uh, rupees uh, right uh, total 7.5 rupees on that that's the only money that you can donate but now there is no limit if you even if you are making laws then you can donate then this is again a clear indication that someone is injecting money from using these companies then shell companies as well earlier on your companies or your company has to be three years old but now uh, start a company and if season is going on then you can uh, donate so that's again a big red flag now if we go back uh, to this uh, decision of uh, or this statements of uh, Bombay as well as Calcutta High Court back in 1957 it was said that by Chief Justice uh, at that point of time MC Chagla of Bombay High Court said that uh, not only the company's shareholders but electorals too must know how a party is being financed it is our right we should know that uh, if we are voting for a particular party then we should know how this party is is acquiring its fund the second thing is justice p b mukherjee of calcutta high court said that uh, uh, to the cynic uh, it appears uh, to be a plea of a company to have a legal sanction to bribe the government so that uh, what will happen is uh, you can uh, you can induce you can ask the government or the political party to to create uh, those policies that will uh, favor your business uh, so that's again a big red flag uh, there are some petitions and uh, filed in supreme court and uh, they are uh, you know against uh, this decision of electoral bonds uh, it was passed uh, as a money bill now if you go through article 110 of the constitution it clearly says that your speaker has to decide but there are a few things that it should be pertaining to this imposition of tax borrowing of money by the government from consolidated fund of india or appropriation of money out of consolidated fund of india or any other matter incidental to the subjects explicitly mentioned in article 110 and it is uh, said that uh, this uh, thing is not mentioned uh, right this electoral bond has nothing to do with the money bill so that's one number one number two is that uh, this scheme uh, flouts a number of fundamental rights uh, and it is fundamental rights in the sense that uh, when things are hidden right uh, so it's it's basically a violation and the other thing if we go through this book how india became democratic on its chinese book uh, remember it's this type of questions you don't find in your in your upsc exams uh, but in other exams like uh, rbi and you know bank related exams and ssc they do ask you about books as well they are part of current affairs so in case you find this uh, question so remember this book is written by uh, mr saini so when the power in this book it is said that when the power is diluted through opacity in political funding even democracy right as a whole loses its intrinsic value and uh, a few you know back in time uh, english uh, jurist uh, uh, stephen uh, sadly has said that uh, by formulating this electoral bond scheme government has uh, you know there are two possibilities one is that government has no clue about constitution and the other thing is that it does and has expressly set out to transgress it so these are a few negative or you can say important critical observation about uh, this electoral bonds uh, now we have uh, end this long trauma it's about this denotified and nomadic tribes uh, they this uh, root of this uh, denotified or dmt uh, we can find it from the cta that is criminals criminal tribes act of 1871 at that point of time india was under control of british government uh, for british uh, the main job was to make as much as they can as much as money and wealth they can and if they have to destroy jungles if they want wood for construction for for railways for any other things right uh, then they do it uh, and for that if you have to uh, you know kill uh, tribal people who are uh, who were and who are in fact uh, protecting forest if you have to kill them then do it that's what uh, british raj's attitude was and because of this thing uh, they declared 200 tribal communities to be hereditary criminals can you believe this thing hereditary criminals that means they are criminals that's it right uh, so after independence uh, there were a few tribes uh, we call them habitual offenders we you know not tribes but this criminal tribes act was uh, converted into a more softer version of HAO that is habitual offenders 
Act after independence. We are talking about now. If you go back to this uh, this British Raj law, then it was amended uh, three times: uh, eight, in 97, in 1908, and in 1911. And it was made more and more strong. It gave extra power to authorities and people and people those who were who officials say, for example, they can, you know, snatch away a child uh, who is ages six or above from from the parents, uh, terming their parents as criminals and uh, what happens is when you get rid of this sort of acts uh, the, that mindset that hangover you know is uh, it will stay and it is something that we still find in officials and members of our society when it comes to this uh, denotified uh, tribes uh, right uh, this denotified and uh, nomadic tribes uh, we still find that they are ostracized uh, in our society or by our society and one of the reason is that uh, they for for centuries you know their tradition is to move from one place to another they are always on their foot so they are here today they will be following season they will be in second state tomorrow so uh, that's how their life has been and uh, we have not been able to you know understand their uh, their their tradition uh, we take it as and just like british government we take it uh, we take it we look at it a bit you know skeptically we are afraid of something that we are not sure about uh, but this is uh, not an excuse to to ostracize them and to not issue them any sort of residential proof and not allow them to flourish in independent India. Uh, there was uh, this uh, you know commission, first national commission for denotified nomadic and semi-nomadic tribes (CNCDNT). It was constituted in 2003 and reconstituted two years later under the chairmanship of Bal Krishna Renke, which uh, submitted uh, submitted its report in. 2008. Uh, these recommendations were echoed in this uh, Ida Idate Commission uh, that was constituted in 2015, and uh, this Idate Commission was trying to do some ground uh, research or you can uh, carrying out some surveys and field validation work, but uh, this funding was denied by Ministry of uh, Social Justice and Empowerment. So even today we find that I'm not saying the whole government, but there are a few bodies and there are few people in government who are not happy with this, uh, you know, diluting or making it a bit more humane. Uh, this act with this uh, dear friends uh, latest news items uh, ed raids uh, f a few places uh, uh, belonging to mr vadra's staff so this is a sort of uh, it is alleged that it's a political battle uh, then rajan's uh, student is new cea that is chief economic advisor rajan means Raghuram rajan and his new student or our new chief economic advisor his name is uh, krishna murthy subramaniam NSCN uh, faction asks a center to revive ceasefire, so that's a good news. Expi expired dart was fired on Avni. Avni, that is this T1, this Tiger 1, the official name of this Tiger, known as Avni, that was killed on uh, November 2nd November. So, uh, this NTCA's uh, investigation indicates that uh, this dart was outdated. Normally, you have to use it within 24 hours once you make it, but it was. Uh, it expired, right? It was uh, 56 hours uh, since this uh, dart was used. And MS Swaminathan, of course, and the reason why it is important, because once this dart has, you know, this 56, outdated dart uh, didn't work, so finally they used a bullet. MS Swaminathan calls uh, GM crops a failure, centers advisor false paper. Now, the thing is, as far as uh, Swaminathan is concerned, he has said that uh, these GE seeds are expensive. He has said that uh, there, there are some health concerns as well. Uh, BT cotton occupies 95% of India's cotton acreage, but uh, its production or uh, per yield production or this no per hectare, this 500 kilo per per hectare uh, is lower than uh, yields in China and Egypt. Uh, Briti brinjal is, uh, is is still you know uh, not rolled out. The same goes for GE mustard as well. Luxembourg. Uh, yesterday I displayed this country to you. You know when we are talking about France. Uh, so this country is in news because. Uh, it's the first country, a small country and first country in the world to declare a public transport as, uh, you know, for free. And uh, current account deficit widens to 2.9 in quarter two. That's a matter of a little bit of concern. Vocabulary here, I have that for you, for you guys. And uh, here you can see this pick. Uh, the answer is is uh, this uh, Julian Assange uh, associated with this WikiLeaks. And Ecuadorian president uh, is uh, looks like he's not a bit happy with this. Uh, a person here, Julian. Yesterday's uh, this um, quiz, uh, this uh, map-based quiz, was about uh, not about Rome, but it was about Vatican City, and it was in news because Pope lives here, and Pope has said that he is going to visit, uh, you know, this uh, uh, 
a portion called Arabian Peninsula. And this is going to be for the first time for any pope to visit this place. And uh, question for you guys, map-based quiz, uh, can you give me the name of this country? It's not going to be that difficult. It pose in news again, but uh, let's see how many of you can get it right. Uh, this is your answer from yesterday's MCQ. This is your new MCQ. Tomorrow is Sunday, so I will see you tomorrow as well. Till then, enjoy your studies. Uh, dear friends, you can download the PDF of today's lecture from my FB page and Twitter handle. Please make sure that you share this lecture with other students as well. It is very important. God bless you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Till then, Jai Hind.